Thanks. I think we're all set. All right. Welcome, Peter Alvarez, uh, Chair of the Civilian Review Board, Commissioner, uh, fortunately, Honorable Judge Leslie Harris, uh, the other commissioner here to get this quorum, had a family emergency, couldn't make it today. So as such, we can't have, we don't have quorum for the meeting. Uh, so what we do want to do is make sure we're respectful of your time. Um, so to the extent you have public comment on anything, um, feel free. And if you just wanted to observe, we'll close the meeting. We're going to reschedule one for next week virtually to make sure like the stuff on the agenda is covered. But to the extent anyone was wanted to have public comment, um, wanted to make sure that we respectful of your time. Um, um, I guess the only comment, I have a couple of comments, I guess. Cooper, you could, if you could stand up just so it's on the, um, and project so we can get it there. Um, I guess I have a couple of comments. I feel like this time is not suitable to call it a community meeting. I mean, 1 p.m. on a work day is not very engaging as someone who engages and holds a lot of advocacy things for the community. This time is... I, I just don't know who came up with this time. It's not very um, inclusive of everybody's time. If you work a nine to five, how would you come to this meeting? You know what I'm saying? It's on a work day, whatever. For the record, can you say your name? Um, Didi, and I'm from Jamaica Plain. Um, the other comment I have is I went online and maybe I'm not seeing it, but I don't see what the policies and procedures are. So I could hold you or anyone could hold you guys accountable for reviewing things. I say that because I have experience with you guys. I have a case that's open with you guys. And to be quite honest, I'm not appreciating the services that you guys are doing. I feel like I was already distrustful and even putting in a complaint and then now putting in a complaint and the way that it's being handled makes me feel like I shouldn't have even put in a complaint. And I think that if I'm feeling this way, then it, there's probably other people that might be feeling this way. And I wanted to use this office as a way to, um, I guess, go about what I needed to go about. But I felt like this whole time that I'm doing this process, I've been trying to, I guess, hold you guys accountable. When you guys are supposed to be holding someone else accountable, and if you can't hold yourself accountable, then how can I trust y'all to really do what y'all need to do on my behalf? Um, and so I... I wanted to speak from facts, but I, I didn't have any to bring because I don't know where you guys' policies and procedures are when it comes to investigating a case or the timeline or anything. So I guess that needs to be outlined somewhere on the internet. So someone can, I, I see that there's a link to submit a report and check the status of your report. Um, I don't know how to check the status of my report. I didn't go through it, but I don't see anything on it that says, okay, once you put in a complaint, this is the timeline, this is what you should expect. These are the things that we want from you. These are, I don't see any of that. Okay. Uh, so on the first point, the time point, actually at the Civilian Review Board meeting um, on Tuesday, something we've been thinking about different times. Um, for CRB, I would say the commission as well. There has been some commission community meetings that have been in the evening. We've done, uh, and OPA has done community meetings. Um, that are that are in the evening as well. Um, but that's a point well taken, like you know, in the middle of the work day. Um, sometimes other folks would say, you know, if they if people work overnight and then it's different times, but I do take the point that there should be more movement in terms of, you know, a 5 30 session, sometimes maybe an early morning. Uh, I just to make it so that whoever wants to come and needs to come at least has the opportunity to come each time if each time we're meeting it's always between like a 10 and and four like that cuts out a lot of folks that need to do that and that's something actively thinking about that so i appreciate that comment i think um some of the regs that we were going to talk about here were actually those process points on you know when uh like what is it considered an incomplete complaint we have to approve a regulation on that so those are posted um, so your feedback on that will be great because they're actually new regs that are being promulgated that we that we are considering. Um, and you know that the, the whole path office has put forward, but like me and the the, uh, the judge, the commissioner, when we do 
executive director comes, we're going to look at them and, and give our comments, listen to all of the public comments that we've been receiving um, from the from the community, also from advocacy organizations and other members of the boards, right? Because they, they're not part of the commission to promulgate the rules. Um, and I think generally, um, yes, I mean, if you want to, do you, do you feel comfortable going through kind of what process typically is? I, I think one, it's mostly uh, like kind of, it's a typical process, but it has to be how complete the complaint is and all of that. So as long as everything's filled out completely with the correct phone number and stuff, I think that there's like a general gist of when things happen, but some of the things that we are wanting to promulgate, like what is considered incomplete, when, you know, how many times do you call someone until like you just have to move on? Like those are things that we have to like make rules for, to, for, for that reason, right? So like people kind of have this sense of like the lay of the land. I mean, do you feel comfortable kind of saying generally what the process is right now? And then you know, we have rules that are gonna formalize some of it, but. Yeah, I mean, um, someone reaches out to our office to file a complaint uh, or fills out the online complaint form. Uh, we just make sure that it's complete, that we have all the information that we need, uh, determine what rule or procedure of the Boston Police Department has been violated um, and constitutes mis potential misconduct. Uh, and then it's moved on to the investigators who go about getting, you know, uh, uh, police reports, 911 call footage, um, body worn cam footage, um, normal video footage. Um, and then they work on a report and present it to the board at the next board meeting. Yeah. Okay, what's the timeline? What's I that? think the state gives a, a general guide, right? Yeah, and I think um, the idea is to do it within 180 days. Uh, but again, it depends on the case. So like if we're not hearing back from the complainant regularly, that can impact it. If it's just it, it very much depends on the case. But we try to stick to the 180 day okay, deadline. So what happens when it's after 180 days? Like, how do we hold you guys accountable? I mean, one of the other rules that we're, that we're trying to promulgate, it, 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 like I'm um, speaking on it because it's online and, you know, you're here and I want to respect your time and you're asking questions that were relevant to what the agenda was. So um, one of the things that we want to do, so for example, if we have, we don't have quorum in the civilian review board once, right? This meeting will typically be two days after so that if you don't have quorum in the civilian review board, if this meeting has quorum, you can resolve the case because a CRB can't look at the cases. Um, if there's no quorum, it's easier to get quorum when there's three people. You need two out of three. Not having an executive director means like if me or the judge are ill or have an emergency, then we have no quorum. So like it's kind of when you have three people, it's a lot easier, and the executive director is always here. So like. They're in house, so they're usually here, and then you just need one other person with the other boards. Um, but one thing that we want to do to make sure that, like, we don't even reach that point um, is that if the CRB can't hear it because they didn't have quorum, it just goes to the to the commission. And we've actually used that process already. We want to formalize it so that if that happens, a decision can be made with the commission. Sometimes there's parts of the complaint. Um, that we need to send it back to get more information because you know we have what's in front of us on what their rules and regs are um, for the department and we and then what the discipline matrix is, the progressive discipline matrix. And sometimes in order to even determine, you know, whether that there's gray areas, we need to ask for more info. So it takes longer. But I would think, and that you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think actually if you give a call like Folks here in the office are really good at giving a status update. This is what we need, this is what we're working on. Um, you know, do you feel like have you called the office and people have said we don't know where you're like, you know, what what's been your experience? Have you been able to call and leave online? There's a way to check too. I mean, respectfully, I think one just hearing all of that is it's even it's just building my frustration even yeah. more. Because like how the hell are y'all? operating an office without all of these things already situated. You know what I mean? How are you taking complaints if y'all are worrying about coming up with the procedures and policies to handle the complaints in a way where it's, you know, you have some guidelines, like how are you having, 
How are you taking complaints if you don't even have all of your policies and procedures in place yet? That's typical in most agencies where 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 rules are promulgated, uh, especially new agencies. There, rules are promulgated. Saying, over, I, over. I understand that. Okay. Like, I understand things change. That's why you have bylaws, that's why you have boards, that's why you have meetings. I, I get all that. What I'm saying is very set in stone policies to be able to do some of the most smallest tasks, which is to look over a complaint, should have been established prior before taking any complaint. Right. And so if you're saying that you can't tell me set in stone, like if I can't go online and say, you have 180 days to give me a response, and if it doesn't, this is what I should be able to do. I can't do that. Unless, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong. You guys could pull up the website. And if you show me that, then I'll stand corrected. But from what she just told me is that I, and this is a personal experience, that y'all ain't holding up to your standard. And I cannot come in and say that to the person who is doing my investigation because I don't see those policies and procedures on the website. So I had to come here to then ask that and then for you to now tell me that y'all are also working on other things that need to be situated. That's frustrating to me. This is y'all job. This is my life. This is other people's lives. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I came to y'all because I'm like, well, maybe the city has this here with some like a little sliver of hope that you guys was the better option than actually putting in the complaint with, you know, um, BPD. But it's like, do you know what the backlog is of uh, BPD uh, investigation investigation? No, I don't. It's and years, and there there is no there's no visibility. You can't call and get any information. I, I would say I would I'm love to think, and like as the CRB, I don't I I am not the person that runs OPAC. OPAC is the one that runs the investigations. But what I will say is I've seen very thorough investigations come in front of me. We've had sustained findings. Um, we have, I know that they've sometimes where there are delays are trying to get a video that's at a store, you know, maybe not like, you know, the, the police department may get the body cam, but they need something I, I like things like that. And is, they've been responsive to folks. If, if that's the issue, then that's where you guys need to focus y'all, y'all energy on instead of having now meetings to worry about policies and procedures on little things like that. You guys need to get the, the support from the city to be able to get those videos, especially when it comes from BPD right away, because then they're not being transparent. No, I, I think BPD so, is typically, there's a process to go through it, but I think it typically, every time that like we've seen in terms of the audio and the video, there's just sometimes you gotta go, put in the request, they go, they send it to you. Sometimes you gotta ask, or, hey, was there another one? Like, you know, it's like a iterative process. Mm -hmm. But I do think that, you know, taking your point, I understand your frustration. I will say, and this may not be as comforting, but I will say, you know, when you think about what the process was before, you go into the place that you have the complaint about to make the complaint and you make it and there's really, there's no time at all. You can call them and they wouldn't even tell you where it's at. I would like to think, and based on from what I've heard of folks, and I know this happens here, anyone who makes complaints can call here and they'll tell you exactly where it's at. Like we're still investigating, we're getting this video, we may need to call you for this reason. Like they usually are able to kind of give you a sense of where things stand with a call. I think online you can do a status update too. I think 180 days is a standard set by the state that I think is a reasonable one, um, but I do think there are circumstances where it ends up where it may end up going over. What I what what my, our goal here in terms of the rules is sometimes there are rules that you have to make that you know the city council makes a, an ordinance. We have to then implement that ordinance by promulgating regulations. A lot of times when you promulgate regulations, you're only doing so once you realize that they're from what the ordinance is there are certain things that need to happen. Like when the CRB or the, the internal uh, affairs panel, when they have a, a conflict or don't have quorum and you want to settle something quickly, you know, it comes from that. Like, okay, maybe we do want to settle something quickly or maybe someone's conflicted out, which makes you not have a quorum. Kicking it to the commission, there's only three people, that's something that comes about because you you 
get the experience of someone not having a conflict, right? You start to get more data and more experiences to see that. So I don't want you to think like just rules established within the office are, are just happening now. The rules and the, the guidance procedures, like all of the folks are trained on doing an investigation, ordering uh, video things, uh, ordering police reports, like that's the process. They try to do it as expeditiously as possible. There are, there are a good number of complaints. There are some complaints that we've sent back for follow-up to make sure like we get the most fulsome picture. Um, but I think the folks are working hard. I do think that they will answer your questions on, on the phone or if you you know call them to come by and talk about the status of where things are and where they see it. So I just do want to let you know that, that that's available to you. And, and I could be corrected if I'm wrong. That's been the experience I've seen here that folks have been able to call them get a sense of where things stand in their investigation, where is it going, is, you know, and and I think that, that that's definitely something that can happen. And I think, look, we tell you the 180 days, I think that's a that's statewide um what the what the requirement is. I think we I think to go past 180 days, do we have to give a notice or no the police department does, but but we don't. Yeah. Uh, but I think typically, like, has anything lasted? And this is only like... if there's an open case with BPD, if we haven't been able to get into contact with the complainant, those kinds of things. Yeah. And so those are the things in this reg, like formalizing what those processes are for someone like yourself, like when is something considered incomplete or when is something going to delay? It's formalizing it. And you only get that when you start getting data. You don't know what those gaps are going to be when you're doing new processes. Once you start getting the data, you start to realize what you need to formalize and make sure you have a process set forth. And so I think all of your questions and everything you said are very relevant to what we're doing right now. But I do want to say that like the fact that we're doing it right now is based on the experience. And it's not like, oh, go back to you shouldn't have even heard a case. Well, there were three sustained or four sustained findings that would have never gotten heard or, or put in front of anyone uh, from our board sustained findings the commissioner only one only one who you know we we check the box on but what it does is they like we collect data on all the complaints the complainants like you know kind of demographics what is the nature who's doing that um that's daylight the other piece of daylight is before you were never going to get any that no information ever came out and it was investigated it was officers investigating themselves. Um, so is the process gonna be perfect here? No, I. is it better than the status quo? I would like to, say, to believe yes, but I think other folks can disagree. It's a new office and process um, that is being shaken out. Um, I think the folks here at OPAT have done a lot of work and they put a lot of time into their investigations and, Read through them, but I, I can understand that folks disagree. I would just want to let you know, I think it's it's a little different than the status quo. You can let me know how many days in are you on the complaint, too? Yeah. Oh, just estimate, you don't have to have the exact. 400 and something. Oh, so it's a early complaint from there. No, no, I'm talking about 400 and something. What is it, 365 in a year? That's November, that's like 390 something. Yeah, like maybe. 425 days maybe Super and so I've been on top of it and I don't know is this on the internet that's not a be. oh okay so I don't really know. yeah you don't know no no you don't gotta say that's why it's frustrating and so I'm, I'm I came here on a day that I need to be working so it's not like none of the things that you brought up is relevant to what my particular case so that's very frustrating and to be quite honest I did look when I first put in the case I did research you guys office and, you know, I know there's policies, procedures, and politics in general. And, you know, the police aren't going to just go down without a fight. So I'm not expecting this office to be winning every case. But three to four cases is not, like, that don't feel good to me. I, don't know. I mean, <laughs> so, I, and as like, members of the public, I, 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 I think that, you know, that is something that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't disagree. I think we have a make the city council said, you have to look at a matrix provided by the police department in order to find a sustained finding and say, this person did that. That I can't deviate and the, the board, the CRB can't deviate from what 
is legally the standard that they're telling us we need to yeah, use. I understand that. Uh, and so the thing is, though, that that's all that's all the, the game that comes into play when people don't want to put in complaints even with BPD. Oh yeah, it I mean, comes I mean, into this this whole thing. This is why you know what I'm saying. People don't come to the office like this. We don't put in complaints with BPD because of what yeah. you just said. Yeah, no, and I mean, I think, but I do think in under those circumstances, still being able to have sustained findings, I think, is really. But I also think even even in the not to, even in the times that the commissioner doesn't adopt the recommendation, it's actually they have to explain why they did that. They never had to say. That just was a closed case and no one ever could talk about it. Now they have to put out a statement and it's public record and you start to see patterns uh, like and, and you start to see, you know, what they deem acceptable, what they don't deem acceptable. The public at least has knowledge of what is out there and that didn't exist before. Is that the best thing ever? Does it feel the best? Is, is it going to feel good to you where your case has been with us for over a year? Um, and that can't feel great. I'm just, I, when you said a sliver, I think it's at least a sliver. Of, yeah, I understand. Of, of, I'm just saying the knowledge has always been there. It's just never been public and written on paper. Yeah. I mean, as, but not for me. But I mean, but the streets know, people, for sure. The streets exactly. know what so goes on, of course. It's, it's not like this is an unknown thing. What I'm, I'm solution-based. Yeah. I don't want a whole bunch of paperwork. I don't want you to keep telling me the data. And I sure the hell don't want to keep looking at the patterns when it's happening to people in real life. That's that's the biggest problem. Yeah. So it's like if we're going to invest into a office, I want something to be done besides yeah. just y'all coming up with paperwork and showing us the pattern. So it's not against y'all. It's not to say y'all not working no, hard enough. I'm I saying agree. that like we need to do something bigger or something. That's what I'm getting at. So a lot of times what this comes to is like, you know, the reason papers and, and public record is important is you have media, you have community organizations, they can start collecting that and that they can push for reform to get another ordinance passed to allow more thing, like to, to, to change things. That That's why I think like when I say a little daylight, it just gives more information to the public because as I said, you know, the streets will know what goes on or what doesn't. And even if it never came out of an investigation and it's just... You know, sealed and and it was it, it was an inconclusive investigation and there was no finality. Um, but that's not data. And you know, like the way that, that these things work have to be testimony, data, this, that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not in complete agreement that it always has to be that way. But it's actually providing a roadmap to anyone that wants. Like, okay, how often are they not adopting a recommendation? How often are they? When are they doing so? What is the race of the officer or what is the race of the complainant when it's this or that when like all of these things, how often is this taking place? I understand your frustration. And I think if there's an opportunity while you're here, if if one of the investigators or someone's here, I would I, I, like so that your time here, you're out from work, um, like you took time off from work, you should definitely talk to someone and they can give you an update on your case. And, and like, I think that you deserve that if it's been over a year. Like you deserve an update on your case to see where it's at. Um, and if to the extent there's someone here that can give that, then that'd be great. And we can do that. Okay, um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I think with that, you know, lack of quorum and want to get you to the right person and either full take will bring you to them. Um, at 128, I'm gonna close out this public meeting. Thank you for your comments. Uh Didi, I really appreciate it. Um, on the timing and you know, timing of meetings, point taken, and on your frustration level, uh, on your complaint being over a year, I, I take that as well. And I think it's important for us to have a level of dialogue on <clears throat> on what that is. And uh, <clears throat> really appreciate you coming here and taking the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, seeing someone here was one of the reasons I was like, well, we'll have the meeting because if no one's here, then we wouldn't have one. So you can close it up. Um,